watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome to Law Talk on Germantown Municipal Television. My name is Vince Perryman and I'm a local attorney with the Law Offices of J. Vincent Perryman. Each month, Law Talk focuses on a wide range of legal issues and topics. Today's show will discuss the roles and responsibilities of Shelby County Commissioner. With us now is Commissioner for District 12, Van Turner. Van, thanks for being with us. Thank you. You know, when I was looking at uh, the county commission, who I could get on, mm -hmm. I'm like, well, let me call Commissioner Turner. And then I realized, I'm like, I'm kind of ignorant on what all the county commission does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, that's a good place to start for the viewers is just what is the governing body of the, the Shelby County Commission mm -hmm. and what are the roles and responsibilities? Well, the uh, Shelby County Commission is comprised of 13 commissioners. Uh, and really the major role of the commission is to take in property taxes. So if you stay in Memphis or any of the other six municipal uh, cities, mm -hmm. uh, you pay property taxes in addition to your city or municipal tax. We take those property taxes and our number one uh, obligation fiscally, uh, if you will, is to support education. So as you know, there's no longer a Memphis City School. Mm -hmm. And essentially, you have the Shelby County Schools. So we support uh, all schools, but primarily the Shelby County Schools. And when we, um, I guess, give money to the Shelby County Schools, all six school districts benefit. So in essence, uh, Shelby County Commission funds all of the seven school districts within the county. And essentially that's 40% of the county budget. We have a $1.1 billion budget, approximately 400,000, no, excuse me, 400 million mm -hmm. um, uh, of, of that budget goes towards education exclusively. Outside of that, uh, we support and finance the courts uh, in jails and um, and so that's another aspect and then we provide deputy sheriffs and essentially uh, we support the municipal uh, police forces but in the, un in the unincorporated areas we have direct responsibility for those unincorporated areas. District 12 is unique because half of the district includes the city of Memphis and the other half is unincorporated Shelby County. Okay. So um, that's basically what the county commission does in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, I mean, it, it's one of those that I think we, so many times we get stuck on the idea of national politics mm -hmm. and we forget the fact that, like, we're more affected by our local politics. Correct. And that, that's the whole thing there as far as how does the interface work with, you know, you guys are doing, is it the funding on mm -hmm. the courts mm -hmm. or uh, how does that? Yeah. So essentially, um, each year, we, we uh, hear the budgets of all the entities related to the county. Mm -hmm. So that would include, for instance, the General Sessions Court Clerk. Okay. They present a budget and we fund their budget. The criminal Court Clerk, Probate mm -hmm. Court Clerk. So all the clerks of court uh, come before the commission for funding and so we fund all of those uh, entities. Not only that, we fund the Sheriff's Department and within the Sheriff's Department you have jails uh, as well as uh, the, the, the deputy sheriff's force. Mm -hmm. So essentially that's how it's broken down and, and of course we can't forget the judiciary. Mm -hmm. So we fund primarily uh, the judges as it relates to general sessions, civil, criminal, then you have circuit, of course, chancery, then you have the criminal courts, probate court, mm -hmm. uh, and then you have juvenile court as well. So all of that funding comes through the county commission budget. Okay, yeah, and it's kind of interesting with that. I guess it leads to the question in my mind, since I deal with it all the time, when I'm paying the court costs mm -hmm. um, down there at the courthouse, how does that affect the budget on well, this? I just Yeah, I mean, it, it helps out, you know, as far as the bottom line is mm -hmm. per, per your tax bill. So the more that the courts are um, sort of self-sustaining, the less burden it is on the commission, which then has to get the money from the property taxpayers. So that's how it all relates. Those court costs essentially help defray uh, the costs that uh, they would incur 
uh, you know, exclusive of what mm -hmm. we give them. So, so when you guys are looking at the individual budgets for the different entities, so, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll just pick on uh, General Sessions for a second. Right. When they, they, so they submit the budget, does that show what their revenue is from the cost? Right. And everything? Yeah. Okay. It shows personnel, it shows equipment, it shows uh, positions, whether they're field or open. Uh, it shows IT needs, mm -hmm. so it's, it's the whole nine. I mean, anything that they're spending money on or need money for, that's presented to us. Sometimes they ask for an increase. A lot of times they're very efficient. Mm -hmm. My hat's off to you know the clerks and the judicial system and, and all of and what they do because they do it without really asking for more uh, funding mm -hmm. in many instances. So I think they do a great job. And uh, essentially, we see everything. And I guess one question that I've always had is, is who, is it the clerk's office that makes the recommendation for an increase in a filing fee? Because I know we've got some state taxes in there right. and, yeah. and some different things. Mm -hmm. And is, do you guys have some oversight in that? Well, we, we do as it relates to county specific fees. Mm -hmm. However, you do have, of course, um, a lot of influence oversight as well from the state. And so there are fees that are tacked on per, you know, state law. And when you really look at the criminal courts and the civil and chancery courts, there are a lot of what they have to do is regulated by the state. For instance, if one of the judges leaves those positions, it's the governor, the state governor who mm -hmm. appoints, of course. But in the general sessions court, we have a little more authority and responsibility. So if a general sessions judge leaves, the county commission appoints. Okay. So that gives you sort of a good barometer of, of uh, you know how how the courts are sort of split and who who funds the courts. I got you. Yeah, because I've had one of those where you know I'll, I'll also practice in some of the other counties and you've got a lower filing fee on some right. divorces, and I get the question from clients and I'm, I and honestly I've never known the answer as to who they need to talk to if they right. feel like they're paying too much. Yeah. So. Well, I mean that would be probably. Uh, something to take up with the county commission and the Tennessee General Assembly. And then, mm -hmm. the, again, the question uh, is, is given back to them. I mean, would you rather pay higher court costs or higher property taxes? Right. Because, you know, we're going to have to pay for the service some mm -hmm. kind of way. Yeah, right. and that, that's always kind of the thing mm -hmm. is, you know, you get, when you're talking about taxes and services, mm -hmm. it's not free. You know? No. So the, um, and, and as far as on the, the jail and the budgets mm -hmm. with that, mm -hmm. how all does that work? I mean, because it seems like there's a lot that goes into that people wouldn't realize. Yeah, and, and you have to keep in mind the sheriff is the only constitutional officer who can contest an allocation from the commission. So what does that mean? That means if the sheriff is unhappy or displeased with the amount that we're allocating him, he can take us to an arbitration. And that's within the Shelby County Charter. Okay. So that's how important um, I, I would say judicial or you know law enforcement services are to mm -hmm. the county uh, to allow them to really contest an allocation by the commission. So basically, we fund the sheriff's budget, and the sheriff sort of decides where that money goes. Um, and okay. so he, he decides, you know, the, does more need to go into the jail system? Does more need to go into, uh, I would imagine, the, the local penal form that's mm -hmm. here as well? Uh, there's more need to go into putting more deputy deputies on the on the beats, you know, mm -hmm. throughout the county. So we leave that up to the expert, and the expert is the chief law enforcement officer for the county, which is the sheriff. But he does have to present his budget to us, line item by line item, when we fund it. But if there's an issue, he does have the ability to uh, arbitrate. Okay. Uh, when we return, we'll continue our discussion about the role of Shelby County Commissioner. Please stay with us. where fish swim and birds fly, where mountains spring up and trees and grass grow all around. History is made, art is created, things happen that should always be remembered. Heroes emerge, a woman sets people free, a man makes light, a leader steps forward. People get together, they help each other out, 
They make their own places to run and play and contemplate the universe. There's pride and gratitude and fun. It belongs to everyone. It can be a place, a feeling, a state of mind. So get up, get out there, and find your part. Watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back. I'm Vince Perryman, and you're watching Wall Talk. Joining us on our show is Shelby County Commissioner Van Turner. We're discussing the responsibilities of a Shelby County Commissioner. Van, before the break, uh, we were talking about all the different budgets that get submitted to you all and how you have to approve it. And I think, you know, some viewers may be wondering, like, that's sounds like a lot of numbers that a commissioner's got to sit down and look at. Mm -hmm. So how does sort of the, mm -hmm. the approval or the review of that, how does that take place? Very good question. So the county mayor is tasked with presenting the county commission with a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. So it's really the first uh, sort of crack at it would be the county mayor along with the county CFO and, 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 and you know, that whole team mm -hmm. working on presenting to the commission a balanced budget. So once that budget is presented to us, we typically have budget hearings. So we bring each department before us and we go through their budget asking questions and seeing where a lot of times we can create more efficiencies or where there are needs at. And mm -hmm. we try to support those needs without, you know, raising taxes. And as you would note, this past summer, we actually gave a tax decrease because of the adjustment and property taxes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, it feels good to be fiscally, uh, you know, prudent and to be efficient with the county resources. And I think this commission has done a good job and I think we're, we're way ahead as it relates to getting our debt down and being able to fund what we need to fund and mm -hmm. still, you know, uh, ensuring that we are stabilizing our taxes property taxes for our, our citizens. There's still a lot of need in the community, particularly within the urban core of the mm -hmm. county. And so we're trying to do things such as uh, bring in more deputies. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing in a new class of deputies to assist and support uh, sort of uh, safety issues within the urban core of the county. Because, you know, let's face it, if we're going to attract Amazon or any mm -hmm. other business to this county, I mean, they're, they want, you know, a good safe city, they want good schools, and they want to be able to enjoy the city without fear of having to walk out their front door. Mm -hmm. And I think you do that uh, with, uh, you know, assisting where the need is. And I think all Shelby Countyans should appreciate that because it affects all of us. Yeah, and I think the other thing with it, it it's, you've got to look at it from a holistic standpoint. Right. I think a lot of people forget about that is if we can attract the businesses, mm -hmm. they want to be able to attract employees, right. and then what we should all want as Shelby Counties are for those employees to want to be here and be right. a viable part of the fabric of our community. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And whether you're in Germantown, Carryville, Millington, Arlington, uh, Lakeland, or Bartlett, you want a safe county. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you want to be able to go to a, a game and see the Grizzlies play and be able to do that and not have to worry about safety issues mm -hmm. or to go to a restaurant downtown midtown or go see a, a play at the Orpheum you know. Well and for me I want to have enough bailiffs in the courtroom so right. when I piss somebody off I don't yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't come out, out with okay. black eyes. Exactly right. And yeah. That's been an issue before. A decrease <laughs> of, of bailiffs and we, we fought against that. Yeah. We want to protect our lawyers, judges and litigants. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I've got to say, I've had some that have stepped in and they've been like, you okay? Yeah, <laughs> you right, know, and I right. appreciate it every time. Yeah. So, so the whole thing with this is, I mean, I think we've, we've laid out for everybody the importance of the commission. Right. And, you know, I always hear people, because since I'm out there as a tax attorney, mm -hmm. they want to complain to me about mm -hmm. their property assessment and their taxes mm -hmm. and this and that. Mm -hmm. But everybody's always worried about after the fact. They right. don't think about... Mm -hmm we have elections mm -hmm. and who do we have that are making these decisions. Right. So I know a few years back term limits were a big issue right. and things like that. So where are we as far as like in elections with the commission? Mm -hmm. How does all that work? Typically county elections are, are held on uh, even years every four mm -hmm. years and so next year in 2018 would be a huge 
turnover within the county, uh, within county government. Uh, our current mayor is term limited, so we'll have a new mayor. And half of the commission is term limited, so you see a lot of new faces on the county commission. Mm -hmm. And some of the clerk seats will also be term limited. So you will, you know, probably see a new register of deeds. Mm -hmm. You'll probably see a new clerk of court because the existing persons in those seats are term limited. So you're going to see quite a change next year. Uh, and I think that there is a, enough um, continuity there because it's only half the commission leaving, half county government leaving, that you're mm -hmm. going to see a smooth transition. So I don't expect services to be interrupted or upheaval to happen because of this huge turnover. Uh, and so I, I think, you know, things will, will move on and, and uh, hopefully we'll get good folks to fill those offices next year and, and county government will continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, that, then that's always the thing is, is I, I, I have people regularly come to me and ask, they're like, I don't know anything about the local thing. So mm -hmm. check the boxes. And I'm right. like, okay, well, how about we sit down and we educate a little bit right. and I show you, here's the resources you need to go look at to see if my suggestions make sense to you. Correct. You know, right. and, and it, it's one of those that I, I think on the local level, we just, mm -hmm. we go along with our daily lives. We right. don't hear about it in the news and we don't think. Right as to who our folks are. Correct. So, I mean, it's one of those, like, as, as I sit here, I can think about a few people that I know that are on the commission, or I know the names, but I don't know the full complement mm -hmm. on that. And I know you do a good job of getting out in the public mm -hmm. and talking to people and mm -hmm. talking to constituents. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have a finger on the pulse of, uh, what the feeling is out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I mean, so how, how is that, I guess, experience been for you as far as connecting with the, the voters? Oh, it's been tremendous, man. You know, I love it. Uh, that's why I, I, you know, ran for office. I mean, mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, have a hand in, in helping uh, with some of the issues that we have in the county and, and being able to solve some of those issues mm -hmm. has been a great reward for me, and I, I'm glad I, I ran. Um, you know, next year, if I'm able to win again, I'll be term limited four years afterwards, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm looking to support the next great person uh, to come fill the District 12 seat. Do not conscript me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, and you know, I just want to add here, for instance, the biggest issue that we're likely probably dealing with now would be the sewer issue because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the city uh, government has stated that they're not going to build any more sewer lines out to development projects, you know, far outside of the city limits. And so this is a great concern to a lot mm -hmm. of individuals. And so that's something that if you want to pay attention and listen in to our meetings, you're going to see more of that to come. And we're trying to wrestle with that issue, and hopefully we can get it resolved. When are the county commission uh, meetings? So the, the meetings are 3 o'clock on Mondays, every other Monday. So, for instance, this upcoming Monday we have a meeting, so we won't meet again until two weeks after that. So when we're not having a commission meeting, we have a Wednesday committee meeting, which is sort of like mm -hmm. our work session to go through everything. Those meetings uh, typically begin at 8.30, but this past uh, committee day, we, we started at 8 because we had so much on the agenda. So typically every week, you can either catch us in committee at mm -hmm. 8 or 8.30 or at the commission at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock Monday, uh, committee days are Wednesdays. Okay. When we return from our break, we'll talk more with Van Turner about being a Shelby County Commissioner. Full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back. With us now is Commissioner Van Turner. We're talking about his position as Shelby County Commissioner. Uh, Van, you know, we've talked about uh, 
the importance of the commission mm -hmm. and why people should pay attention to it and the election cycle and the term limits. Mm -hmm. Now, people are probably asking, how do they get in touch with you guys if they've got an issue that they want uh, some, to give you some input on? Yeah, well, our, our number at the commission is 222-1000. Uh, typically, uh, someone is there between working hours, mm -hmm. eight to five, and essentially, if you want to meet your commissioner, uh, they can set up an appointment for you to come in and talk with the commissioner. And if you don't know who your commissioner is, you can always go on to the Shelby County Election Commission's website. And uh, I guess it's VoteShelby.com and mm -hmm. just punch in your address and it'll give you who your commissioner is. And most commissioners have an open door policy. We're, we're located on the sixth floor of the county building. Uh, typically, if you're coming in, we can get you parking in the building and essentially uh, bring you up on the sixth floor and deal with every issue that you have. Yeah, where, where is the county building? Uh, 140 Adams, so that's uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. It's right across from the federal courthouse, and it's uh, sort of adjacent or diagonal from uh, the city, uh, the city building, the city hall. And so um, we're, we're on what they call the mall. And so essentially, we're right in the heart of downtown Memphis. Yeah, if we get the trolley back running, yeah. you take it right to your door, right? Exactly right. <laughs> exactly. And hopefully, it'll be back running soon. Mm -hmm. Although that's a city deal, but you know, as I state, we all benefit. That's right. Because, uh, you know, your county taxes go to help support the city as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's one of those that, you know, the tourism, all the industry helps everyone on the tax base right. with it. So, yeah. And we've got a. It, it, it's always funny to me how we're all in the same county, but it mm -hmm. seems like not everybody in municipalities right. always wants to get along well. Right. Um, whereas I think in some other mm -hmm. large municipal mm -hmm. areas, right. they don't have that issue, which makes it a little easier to attract mm -hmm. business right. and get everybody moving in the same direction. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely correct. Is is not us against them is not you know you in the city of Memphis and there's Shelby County over there is not I'm in the city of Lakeland and there's Shelby County over there I mean we're all one mm -hmm. uh, and essentially to the extent that we can drive that message home what happens uh, in East Shelby affects what's going on downtown mm -hmm. you know what's what's going on in Germantown affects what's happening as I say in Boxtown which is mm -hmm. of course in the city of Memphis and so I think the sooner we realize that, understand it, and appreciate it, I think the further along we'll get, and I believe we're headed in that, in that direction. The best days for Shelby County are ahead of us. It's been a pleasure to serve. I, I uh, cherish the ability to give back the way that I am, and, and I look forward to uh, continuing to serve uh, the citizens of Shelby County. Yeah, and I, I think one thing that people don't pay attention to with the commission, this commission in mm -hmm. particular, because you guys are the first ones to come along with term limits, Right. that has kept it from where, I mean, it, it's one, without term limits, you get to know people and mm -hmm. people are able to villainize those people in mm -hmm. the press mm -hmm. or take something they said out of context right. and just keep the fight going, right. whereas it seems with the term limits and the personalities that mm -hmm. we've got, we've got folks that are working for the benefit of the citizens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you get new blood, uh, new ideas, fresh perspectives, and you know, that's, that's probably important for government. I mm -hmm. mean, you can get stuck in a rut and keep doing the same thing over and over, uh, or you can have, you know, a new perspective on, on matters. And so, I, I, you know, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, and it, it, you know, as you were talking about the different communities in Shelby mm -hmm. County, I always, in some of the conversations that I've gotten into, mm -hmm. based on what I look like, mm -hmm. there are assumptions made or whatnot, mm -hmm. and people will say, reference some area of Shelby County mm -hmm. that they think they know something about, mm -hmm. and I start throwing out, well, what about Beltline? What about New Chicago? What about yeah. this? And they're yeah. like, uh -huh. what are you talking about? Yeah. And I'm like, hey, pay attention. We're yeah. all in We're this all together. That's exactly right. You know, and yeah. it's like if we don't realize that if, if <laughs> if we're not functioning as one entity, then it right. just it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. So, yeah. but the um, it's one of those that, to me, 
as I was preparing for this, I go back to my days in scouting yeah. with the community, citizenship in the community yeah. merit badge, and I think, well, we went down to the city council, but we never talked about the county commission, mm -hmm. and it's one of those that it seems like, you know, as uh, everything's grown over the years, mm -hmm. the county commission becomes more and more important. I think so. Yeah. I think so. And you're probably going to see that continue to happen. Uh, and, you know, and it's good. It's mm -hmm. good that uh, people are recognizing the value of county government and, and are starting to observe it more and begin, you know, and are starting to get to, starting to, get to know it more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they'll be pleased. I, I think we, 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 you know, we run an efficient operation and um, um, from a fiscal standpoint, the county is sound. And, um, you know, again, it's been a pleasure to serve. And I, I just want to invite the, the citizens mm -hmm. and the viewers of your show to, to uh, you know, look us up and call us if you have issues. And as I stated, it's an open door policy. We'll be happy to meet with you. Yeah, and it is one of those, too, that if somebody, if a young person is watching the show mm -hmm. and they're interested in getting involved mm -hmm. in the community and understanding more and about what it takes to get to the position that you've gotten to, mm -hmm. I, I think it's good to contact yeah. the elected officials. Exactly right. There, there's, there, I'm always open for mentorship and if, if uh, students are interested in, in one day serving on the, on the body, please come down, mm -hmm. look at what we're doing. Uh, we welcome you to a meeting. We welcome you to our, you know, different events that are being held uh, per county government. And this is the time to really, you know, get involved and see what it's, what it's all about and plan, and, you know, plan your path. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, this is something you want to do. I mean, you just can't wake up and just say, I'm going to do it one day. It's something that you probably got to work on for a few years. Well, yeah, and it was one of those things that this morning was interesting because I was talking with some of the guys in my old scout troop. Mm -hmm. Well, I was a kid that was on the edge of Midtown, but my scout troop was in Nutbush. Yeah. And we were talking about just within the scout council, how we would see a difference in treatment of social, economic, this mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. And my buddy that I was talking to, I was thinking about him his dad wasn't around, he wasn't this or that. He's pulled himself up through mentorship mm -hmm. like we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I encourage people, start paying attention, mm -hmm. get to know folks that have made it, mm -hmm. and they can help you out tremendously along your path and guiding you. Yeah, you know? yeah the beauty of this great country is that it doesn't matter which zip code uh, you're born. It doesn't matter where you're born, you have the ability to work hard and do better. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. And, and that is a perfect spot to wrap up here. So our time is up for this edition of Law Talk. I'd like to thank our guest for taking time out of his schedule and being with us and sharing his thoughts and insights. If you'd like more information about Law Talk or any other program on Germantown Municipal Television, please refer to our website at www.gmtonline.org. Thank you for joining us and be sure to join us next month for more legal topics. Until then, I'm Vince Perryman. Thank you for watching.